Hi everybody, thank you for watching my video on physics. In this video, we shall talk about an experiment to measure the specific latent heat of fusion of ice. We shall introduce the experimental setup and mention the precautions in order to get a more accurate result. What is latent heat and how can we find the specific latent heat experimentally? The opposite of latent heat is sensible heat. When you hold a piece of ice in your hand, you will feel cool because energy is draining away from you. This is the same as placing a block of ice into a cup of water. The temperature of the cup will fall. The heat lost by the cup of water is sensible heat and is given by Q equal to M times C times delta T, where delta T is the fall in temperature. At the same time, the ice absorbs latent heat because when it melts, the temperature remains unchanged at 0 degrees Celsius. If there is no heat change with the surroundings, it is possible to calculate the latent heat of fusion of ice by equating heat loss to heat gain. I shall demonstrate this in future videos. Latent heat depends on the material as well as the amount of substance. A larger beaker of ice has higher latent heat than a smaller one. On the contrary, specific latent heat depends on the material only. Latent heat Q and specific latent heat L are related by L equal to Q divided by M. We can use a funnel to hold the ice, an immersion heater to melt the ice, and a Joule meter to record the latent heat Q. The melted water is then collected in a beaker and an electron balance is used to record the mass M of the melt water. The specific latent heat of fusion is then obtained by simply dividing Q by M. However, there is a practical problem we need to solve. Do you know what this problem is? And how do you solve it? Pause the video for a while and answer the question. Please press the space bar now to pause the video and write down your answer. The problem is that ice left in a room will melt automatically due to the heat supplied by the surrounding air. However, there is no way to measure this energy. When an immersion heater is inserted into the ice, there will be an additional energy source. We need to eliminate the energy provided by the surrounding air. How can this be possible? Pause the video for a while and answer the question. Please press the space bar to pause the video now and write down your answer. The solution is to use two identical setups, A and B, both including a funnel that holds the ice and an immersion heater. However, in setup A, which we call the experimental setup, the immersion heater is turned on, while in setup B, which we call the control setup, the heater is turned off. After a while, the beaker in setup A will contain more melted water than that in B. Let MA and MB be the masses of the water collected respectively. The difference MA minus MB will be the mass of the water melted by the heater only. A very important precaution in this experiment is to ensure that the two setups are identical. Suggest how we can ensure that the two setups are identical. Pause the video for a while and answer the question. Please press the space bar now to pause the video and write down your answer. A simple way to ensure that the two setups are identical is to compare the drip rates of water from the funnels. If the drip rates are the same, we can assume that the two setups are identical. When the amount of water in beaker A is significantly more than that in beaker B, we can turn off the power supply. However, we cannot measure the masses of the beakers immediately. Instead, we have to wait until the drip rates of the two funnels are the same again. Please explain why we need to wait until the drip rates of the two funnels are the same again before we measure the masses of the melt water. Pause the video for a while and answer the question. Please press the space bar now to pause the video and write down your answer. The answer is that we have to ensure that the final temperature of the heater is at 0 degrees Celsius which means that all the heat from the heater has been transferred to the ice completely. If the heater is still hot, the measurements recorded by the drill meter are not exactly equal to the heat used to melt the ice. Question. In addition, there are three more precautions. 1. Crusted ice must be used. 2. The heater must be fully immersed into the ice. Explain why these two precautions are necessary. The third precaution is to ensure that no ice will be fallen from the funnels into the beaker directly. Such as how you can achieve the third precaution. Be the first to write your answer in the comments below. You are welcome to comment on the answers of other people. I hope this video can help you understand more about the experiment to find the specific latent heat of fusion of ice. Thank you for watching.